Hello, thank you for joining me today on Ask Dr. Lin. Today I will be talking about calcium propionate. If you type that into our website, you'll see all the references, what it's made of and how to use it. So, calcium propionate is one of the most popular food ingredients for the bakery because it helps extend the shelf life by preventing molding. So I have a comment from Agnes in the UK that says, I don't understand how people can't correlate the activity of CalPro in the bread with its activity in the human gut. Human health relies on the good bacteria in the gut. And I strongly believe that CalPro sterilizes the human gut in the same action that it does in the bread. I don't agree with that, Agnes, mainly because of this. Many decades ago, rope was a huge problem in bakeries. It destroyed a lot of products. And when you have rope in the bakery, it's almost impossible to send anything out the door. So CalPro was a godsend and effectively worked against rope and mold. So CalPro affects the mitochondria um, of the mold or bacteria um, and it works from there. The mitochondria, or as some of um, cell biologists call uh, the powerhouse of the cell, provides um, the ability of the cell to reproduce and function. So when you stop the mitochondria from working, you disrupt and you destroy the cell. And to do this, you need a specific uh, uh, ingredient and a specific bacteria. It does not work on all bacteria. It doesn't work on all yeast and molds. It's not that strong. So CalPro is not a general antibiotic, which pretty much kills everything. Remember that. Actually, in a recent study in 2016, it showed that um, a propionate acid affects fungal cell death through mitochondrial medi mediated apoptosis, which pretty much means that the mold cell stops uh, when the powerhouse stops within. Studies indicate that CalPro is one of the safest food additives. Rats that were fed 4% CalPro for a year showed no ill effects. As a result, FDA placed no limitation on its use in food. Now, CalPro is not stored in your body like what you think it is. It's broken down and your, your body uses the calcium and filters out the propionate acid. You know, why keep the propionate acid when your liver and your kidneys can filter it out? So um, that's why, you know, these rats could have consumed more than 10 times the amount of CalPro and nothing really happened to them. Therefore, there are no immediate risks of CalPro ever creating an apocalyptic event on your gut. So you should feel safe about consuming anything that has CalPro in it. It is also used in rubber to help stop it from scorching. But remember, don't be encouraging food bake to munch on rubber tires next, okay? Like many other food ingredients, like salt, sugar, guar gum, it is used mostly here in the food industry before it's used anywhere else. So don't get too caught up on this, okay? Lauren asks, what is the correct pH of water to use with CalPro for it to work well? Well, Lauren, it's not the pH of the water. It's the fermentation process. If the dough is too basic, the CalPro won't work. That is why you need to bring it down to below 5.5 by either adding more vinegar or more fermentation. Um, uh, more fermentation is going to give it more acids. Um, therefore, you uh, might see more molding in um, short, short doughs or shorter fermentation because these kind of process do not produce enough ferment fermented acids. Vesalis asks, is this the pH of the dough or final product? 
um, the 5.5 pH that you need to stay below needs to be the entire process from mixing to sheeting to proofing to baking and final product. All of them need to be below 5.5, otherwise the CalPro becomes ineffective. Natasha asks, can CalPro be used in cakes? Unfortunately, like what our article says, mm, CalPro interferes with the chemical leavening, so it's not recommended for use in uh, chemical leavened um, systems like cakes and batters. Um, for cakes, try sorbic acid. Try this one. Or potassium sorbet. It, it works better in better type products. Eh, better in better type products. <laughs> um, so she Ike asks, my Indian bread doesn't get a shelf life of seven to eight days but only three days. What is the reason? Well, firstly, you need to know that CalPro, it's a band-aid. It's not the cure. The problem is really sanitation issues. You need to clean your lines down, you need to clean your cooling area, clean the fans, clean the filters, just to get rid of mold spores and then use CalPro to help extend it longer. So CalPro is not going to um, eradicate your mold problem. It is going to help prevent the issue a little further along the line. Just remember that cleaning is the best cure. Rihanna asked, would you recommend to spray CalPro onto yeast risen donuts after frying? Um, hmm. I think that would be really expensive. Not only that, it's not a good idea, okay? Um, there are other ways of um, preserving your yeast raised donuts. Um, I would recommend using it in the dough itself um, at the recommended dosage and basically clean up your area, you know, clean up your, your table top areas, clean up your packaging areas, wear gloves, you know, um, at the end of the day, if you want shelf life extension, it's not how much CalPro you use, but also how you use it um, and how you uh, perform your sanitation and your GMPs. Also, if you need a natural solution, you just don't like the sound of CalPro, don't forget about cultured wheat. It is um, basically a, a, a natural fermented product and it looks good on your label. All right, till the next session, please don't overdose on CalPro. That is a very frequently asked question of me. How much up can I use? How much CalPro can I use? Um, not only that, um, it will really make your product stink if you put too much CalPro. And also, look at your surroundings, clean up your area, clean up air filters. I hate to nag on this, but that will give you the best performance for your CalPro. See you till next time.